Guys, this is going to be our new sugar cane patch. Danny just put up that new fence across there between the green grass that we planted last week. And it's already up. Look how pretty and green it's looking. He put a fence up so the cows can't get into the sugar cane patch. They can stay over there in the green pastures. And back across there, you can see the house. We're back on the back of our property. When you come around, the cabin is on the left side, and where that brush pile is, on the other side of it, deer are coming out, and raccoons, and birds, and a possum, and a fox. All these things are becoming that close to our cabin on the other side of this pile. Isn't that awesome? This is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We are getting our sugarcane field ready to plant sugarcane. Guys, I'm using this big uh, turn plow. Now, this is not a moldboard plow. This is a different type. This is a disc type turn plow. This thing will plow down 16 to 20 inches deep. And we turned this about 16 inches deep, as you've seen in the video there, uh, for one reason. There's a lot of roots in this ground from years ago, and where this thing will actually cut the roots and turn them over. Um, I throw the dirt down the hill, and now I'm fixing to turn around and actually throw the dirt back up the hill uh, so that I don't end up with the, all my dirt growing down the hill. Uh, we're doing that because sugarcane needs a deep rooted system. And with tree roots all in the ground, I want to make sure I get them all cut so they don't pull away from the nutrients of the sugar cane when we get it planted. And it's just, uh, it's we feel we found that here at Deep South Homestead in our soil, that's the best way to do it. I know a lot of people talk about we shouldn't be tilling the soil, but guys, the tree roots is grown all under this ground out here. If I don't till this soil and cut those tree roots, the trees will just suck every bit of the nutrients out of the ground. That's why we use this type of equipment to till our soil here. We do this once every three years because it takes about three years for the tree roots to grow back underground out here and start feeding off of stuff. And we have to come in here and we cut them all and then our crops can do good again. So we're going to get back on the tractor. We're going to continue to uh, flip this dirt back up the hill and then we're going to go through it and get all the roots that we see out of it. And after that, we'll put the tiller in here. And we're going to till it all down level and smooth, and then we'll make our rows to plant our sugar cane.
Okay, guys, we've got the field. We run a tiller over it twice now. Got it pulverized and kind of halfway level back up. Still got a lot of roots in there. We're going to have to get out, but uh, we're going to... The next thing we'll do is hook up our middle splitter. We're going to come through here and we're going to take our middle buster and bust our rows open for our sugar cane. And then we'll actually harvest some cane to go in there. But we've got like three piles of roots we get out of here. That's why we tell you we flat break our land. We dig it deep and turn it over so that we can kill the roots from these trees here because they, they spread all over this whole field out here up under the ground and suck all the nutrients away from our plants. So that's like we told you in the beginning is why we cut our soils so deep. Plus we break the pan in the ground. Now we don't have clay underneath this particular hill. We have sand and rocks. So that is a plus for us. And on top of that, this whole hilltop you see out here after Hurricane Katrina was a trash pile the size of a 2,000 square foot house piled just as high as a roof of a house would be. And I did not burn it or anything. I let it lay here and literally rot down. And we spread that over this whole hillside in here after it rotted down. And that's what my topsoil is. My topsoil is rotted trees and stuff like that that have been amended back into the soil. I'm pretty sure when I do my soil test, we're going to have to have some lime and stuff like that. But I'll come in and add that a little bit later. I'm not worried about it right now because we don't want the sugar cane actually coming up during the winter months and getting froze and killed. We want it to just wait until next spring to come up once we plant it. So we're going to put the middle splitter on next and get our rows laid off. Okay guys, uh, what you've seen here is I have a row down here at the very bottom. I took my tractor and drove without a plow. They gave me the width I wanted between the rows. about It's about four foot between the rows so that I can keep it mowed. And then I have another row up here on the top. And we, we just drove again above that one and laid off the next row. So we've got probably one to two more rows, probably one more row to plow after this one. And we'll have our field ready to cut the cane and put it in. Okay, guys, we're up into the uh, sugar cane patch now. We're, this is the patch that really is took the worst hit of everything this year as far as sugarcane is concerned. It has almost died on us, uh, but it still looks pretty decent. We're going to be going through here picking the biggest stalks, and we're going to be cutting them up into pieces and putting them in the field to plant for sugarcane. The smaller stuff we're going to leave, and when we get ready to make syrup, we're going to take this out, and we're going to actually be squeezing it to make some syrup out of because we actually want to test the syrup from last year and the syrup from this year just to see if the drought syrup tastes any different than a year that had plenty of rain. We're going to go through here and try to pick out the biggest and best stalks to cut up and go in the field for planting. And um, up in the playlist up here, you will see all of our past sugarcane planting videos and our sugarcane harvesting videos and stuff like that. We're going to show you as much as we can about sugarcane because I know those of you who are watching this video uh, searching for it may have a lot of questions. You may not know that we have other videos out there. Um, we have one about three years ago. This field is three years old. We rotate our fields every three years, and that's what we're doing this year. We're taking everything out of here. This one won't be planted again. We're going to move it down the hill to a new ground down here that's not been planted. We're going to be using that ground 
for growing our future sugarcane on for the next three years. So check out our playlist up here in the cards and you'll see there's a lot more videos about sugarcane from here at Deep South Homestead. Okay guys, this one right here that looks pretty substantial. Uh, we, we can't use our cane stripper on this because if we do, when the things go down the side of the stalk like this, it'll actually destroy the eyes on the sides of it. So we have to strip this by hand so that we don't damage the eyes. Now the eyes alternate. There'll be one on this side, one on this side, one over here, and one over here. And that way, we're, we're sure we're not damaging our eyes by not stripping it with a stripper. We're doing it by hand. I'll show you an example. Here's one behind me here. This one, I'm just basically taking my hand, grabbing the fodder. We're just moving it off. We're pulling it all out of the way. That lets us look at the eyes. We get a chance to see them. And we can tell they're good looking eyes. There's no problems with them. So we know that these two stalks will be good stalks for planting. Now when it comes time for us to actually make cane syrup, we'll come back in smaller stalks that didn't get stripped like these. We'll take the stripper on it because it's going to be made into syrup. It's going to be pressed. It's not going to matter. But we'll have all of our seed cane out of here by then. And the rest of it, we'll just strip it with a stripper and chop her down. This is what we're looking for, guys. See this? See this here? It's already starting to put roots on. All out here on this node here, there's little roots starting to form right there. That means this cane is ready to plant. Now what we'll do is we'll cut this in half right here and we'll make two pieces out of it about, I don't know, about 18, 16 to 18 inches long is what we'll make them. And we're gonna dip the ends in wax so that they don't dry out. And then we'll put them in the ground and Hopefully by next spring, we'll have some good sugar cane coming. So we're going to chop these in half, and then we'll get them in the wax. Okay guys, what we're doing here is we're waxing the ends of the sugar cane. We're doing that because it's been a drought year and it's kind of an extra caution for me. The cane's not as big and full of juice as it normally is. And waxing the ends of it kind of, to me, is kind of like an insurance that the stalk is not going to dry out in the ground before it actually has time to sprout. And um, it's just, it's, uh, it's just to me, it's like an insurance. That's what we're going we're gonna to look at it as. Now, what I've done here is I took a little small crock pot. You can get these things. A lot of people use them to uh, melt incenses and different things in. I just use it to uh, take the uh, regular canning paraffin wax that you buy in the store. It's like called Gulf wax. I put a couple of bars of it in there. All I do is just dip the end of it in it, take it right out. It's coated with wax. The wax is not going to hurt the sugar cane because sugar cane has a natural wax coating on the outside of it anyway to prevent it from drying out. Okay guys, we're over here this morning before the sun comes up because the sun's going to hit this field really hard and it's supposed to be heat index in the 90s today. So we got to get this done and get it done early and we're not through cutting all of our cane to plant. So we've got some in the bucket here. We're going to try to take this and try to start getting it in the ground and kind of show you a little bit about how we plant it uh, to get a really good stand.
Hey guys, if you don't have a lot of sugar cane, you can lay it end to end. But we're looking for a really good stand because this is part of our, you know, part of what we do here at Deep South Homestead. And we're looking for a thick, heavy stand and we have the cane to spare to plant it this away. So we want to go ahead and make sure we get a real good stand. So we're doubling up everything. Okay guys, the piece of equipment we got back here now is called a disc hiller. Uh, on a homestead, you've got to have a lot of equipment to do things on a farm, so you don't have to do everything by hand. This equipment makes life so easy. We would be here for half an hour trying to cover all this by this one row by hand, plus the physical exertion we'd have to have. I can take this in just a matter of, of a minute. I can run down through here and I've got it all covered and it's all fine and dandy and it makes a perfect looking little row. So. That's what we're fixing to do. We're going to, now these are adjustable, you know, for the widths of the rows. And uh, I've got them adjusted out pretty wide right now. I was really going to bring them in, but I don't have time. So I'm not going to throw much dirt on the cane. I'm just going to put a little bit. And then as time goes on, I'll come back and bed it up deeper as we get further into the winter months. Okay guys, we spent a little over an hour out here. We've got the whole thing planted, long three long rows. We've got it ready to go. Um, I hope that uh, maybe you've seen a little bit of planting and how we do it here at Deep South Homestead. Maybe it educated you a little bit on how to plant sugar cane the way we do here in the Deep South. Uh, be sure to check the playlist out up here. We've got a lot of videos on sugar cane, uh, the different things about sugar cane and how it's used and how it's planted and how it's just 
everything processed and everything the syrup making and all that kind of stuff is all up there in the playlist so check it out and then subscribe and hit that notification button so that when we put these type videos up if you're interested in them hey it'll take you right to us and you know what we're doing here at deep south homestead and when we're doing it that's the most important part we're in zone eight and you are able to see in zone eight what we do when we do it so thank you guys from deep south homestead